My name is Fred Andrews. I'm the lead minister at New Life Christian Church here in Northern Virginia, and I get to introduce to you our second speaker, Vince Antonucci. Vince was our first church planter about 10 years ago. He went to Virginia Beach and planted Forefront Christian Church. Now, I'm curious, by show of applause, how many of you are familiar with Vince Antonucci? Uh, that's actually more than we thought. Vince's, Vince's fear today is that nobody knows him. Now, some of you probably know him because, warning, shameless plug, uh, he wrote a book recently called I Became a Christian and All I Got Was, a, was His Lousy T-Shirt, which makes a great birthday present or Christmas present for your kids, and they're on sale there in the back. Uh, Vince has a passion for lost people. In fact, if I were in your seat and I didn't know anything about Vince, there would be three questions that I'd be asking this morning. The first question is, is he real? He's going to talk about a passion for God. He's going to talk about a passion for reaching lost people. Is it genuine? In the 10 years that Vince has been at Forefront, the longer the church has existed, the more lost people, uh, the, the, the larger percentage of lost people have been part of that church. Right now, about 72% of the people that attend Forefront are unchurched, non-Christians in their background. In the last 10 years, they've baptized 1,000 people in their church. They are a multi-site church, three sites, and one of their sites meets on Tuesday night in a bar in Virginia Beach. So, for the many of you who will be in Virginia Beach looking for a bar on Tuesday night, you can go and look at his church. Second question that I would ask is, but is it real? What kind of guy is he at home? There are a lot of guys who can write a good sermon or even maybe write a good book, but at home, spiritually, they're duds. The best, the best compliment I can give to my friend friend Vince is that Vince would rather be a great husband and a great dad than a good preacher, and, and that makes him worth listening to all by itself. The third thing that I would ask, however, for a speaker that I hadn't heard before is, has he ever been on America's Most Wanted? And the answer to that question is yes. The night before we introduced that he was coming on staff at New Life, I turned on America's Most Wanted, and they were doing a feature on Vincent Antonucci, but we don't have time to go into that this morning. You'll have to ask him about that one on your own. Vince, concerned that you don't know him, put this video together for you to get to know him a little bit better. You just got one minute. Move the chair to us one minute. You can do it. One quick minute. We're asking. You ready? Interview me. Interview me. Interview me. Interview me. Interview me. Hi. What am I interviewing you about? I don't know. What, what are you oh, interviewing totally me about? Me. Interview me. Okay, what am I going to interview you about? I have no idea. You're in charge of the interview. Oh. Vince, what do you do? I'm actually a, uh, I, well, I've been a male stripper, but I'm kind of shifting into uh, a Chippendales dancer. A little more clothes get left on, you know. Okay. Yeah. Is that because you're getting older these days? Yeah, yeah, it is. Interview me. Uh, yes, what's your name? This is the worst question I've ever heard. I can't believe this. I'm done with this interview. Well, the, with being a Chippendale dancer or a stripper, you won't have much to pack, will you? That's true. It'll just be me and my thong. <laughs> well, I'm actually trying to get into, uh, like, um, dancing, Maybe doing... Oh, okay, wow. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Well, you know, I'm actually... Wait, I, I just have to ask you. Did, your, did my mother put you up to this? Like, are you... I, it seems to me like you're implying because I'm out here in the middle of the day, I have no job. I mean, just because I live in my mother's basement, it doesn't mean I'm a drain on the welfare system, even though that's what she calls me. Oh, here comes the drain on the welfare system. So I don't know why you have to start out by asking me what my job is. Well, I'm sorry. now wait a minute. Get on back. Okay. Yeah. Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? <laughs> but why in the world would you want a stranger to interview you? Because I'm trying to learn more about myself and help others to learn more about myself. Like, what are the questions? Why would I want to know about, about you? <laughs> why would I want to know about yeah, you? You're going to look at all this and ask why you would want to know about me? Yes. <laughs> um, what do you do for a living? Well, what are you trying to imply? Like, just because I'm out here in the middle of the day and I don't have a lunch box with me that I have no job or because I walk around with a camera. I mean, you're not going to start like joining with my mom. I live in my mom's basement. Yes, I admit it. And I'm a drain on the welfare system. Well, why do you have to go there right away? And couldn't you like establish a relationship, a friendship first? 
My name's Tiffany. <laughs> I work at the town center. That's it. That's it. Cut. <laughs> All right. Let's welcome Vince Antonucci. Thanks. All right. I'm afraid that after that video, you still don't know much about me. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my mother is Jewish, and my father was a professional poker player slash con man. So you might guess that they didn't take me to church much growing up, and you'd be right. Uh, I never went to church. Not one single time my entire life did I go to church. Not only that, but I never uh, had anyone like identified themselves as a Christian to me. No one ever invited me to church. And so growing up, I knew absolutely nothing about God, Jesus, or Christianity. Nothing. And that changed on uh, the Easter morning of my sophomore year in college. I was waiting for my girlfriend to go out to brunch. She was late as usual. And so I turned on the TV, and uh, we didn't have cable in our dorms. We had three channels, and every channel had on what I considered to be uh, a stupid religious show. I left one on for a minute just because it looked potentially comical. It was this older man, and he was sitting down, kind of like sunken into this big red leather overstuffed chair. And, uh, and I was about to turn off, but he spoke, and I will never forget what he said. He said, now, we've been talking about the last week of Jesus Christ's life, and today we're going to talk about, and he named something I don't remember because it meant nothing to me. And he said this, he said, now, most scholars believe that this event happened on the Tuesday of Jesus last week, but today, I will prove through the evidence that it actually occurred on the Wednesday of Jesus last week. First thing I ever heard about Jesus, except for that, I used his name as a curse word a lot. And, and so I heard that, and I was like, huh. Yeah, that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard. I, I, admit, I don't know anything about Jesus, but if he lived at all, it was 2,000 years ago. And you're talking Tuesday or Wednesday? And so, what are you talking about, evidence? And, and so I, I turned off the TV in disgust, knocked on the door, went out to brunch with my girlfriend. But for some reason, I couldn't understand. The rest of the day, I kept thinking about what that guy had said. Uh, that night, I was sitting in my girlfriend's dorm room, and I looked up, and I noticed that she had a Bible on her bookshelf. I'd never, never seen that before. I said, you have a Bible? She said, yeah, somebody gave that to me years ago. I've never even opened it. And I was like, could I borrow it? She's like, you can have it. I don't want it. And I was like, all right. And, and so I grabbed the Bible, went back to my dorm room. Now, I had never even touched a Bible my entire life, all right? And so I didn't know what I was getting into. I opened it up, and I kind of thought it would be set up like a TV guide by day and time because of the whole Tuesday, Wednesday debate <laughs> that was apparently tearing up Christianity. And so uh, this was a student Bible. I don't know if you've ever seen the student Bibles, but when you open up, rather than Genesis 1-1, it says reading plans, first thing. So I see reading plans. It says reading plan through Moses' life, through Abraham's life, through Daniel's life. And I, I keep flipping it, and I see reading plan through Jesus' life. And so I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll kind of check out that one, see was it, you know, what was this guy talking about? How did he have the audacity to say what he had? And so I flipped to, it said read Matthew 1, then Mark 2, and John 4. And so I'm, I'm flipping, finding the page. And, and again, I've never read a Bible, okay? And so I'm expecting it to read like a myth, that, a, a tall tale, that it would say, once upon a time, there lived a man named Jesus who could walk on water, and he had a blue ox named Babe, and he could lasso a tornado. And I'd be like, yeah, I've read these stories when I was a kid, whatever. And, and so I was stunned. I was stunned when I read the Bible. I read Matthew 1 and Mark 2, and over and over, repeatedly throughout the, the Gospels, the Bible says, at this time, in this place, Jesus did this thing. And then at this other time, in this other place where this guy was governor, Jesus did this thing. And I started to think, man, you give a time and a place, there will be evidence, you know? And that guy was nuts, the, you know, that morning, but I'm like, Huh, no, but there would, be, there would be evidence, not Tuesday or Wednesday evidence, but there would be evidence. And so I kept reading now because I'm intrigued. And I learned for the first time in my life that the Bible claimed that there was a God who loved me. I'd never heard that. I, I learned for the first time in my life that the Bible claimed that he had sent his son Jesus to live for me and to die for me. Never heard that. And that he wanted to have this relationship with me and, and that I could spend eternity in heaven with him. And, and I had never heard that. And I knew that I had to know if it was true. 